Hi, this is Marlon from MarlonMattPherson.com, and you're listening to or watching Future Steps Creative, the show that talks about online business strategies, especially around content marketing and website production. Um, so you can apply the principles that I talk about. I try to simplify them so you can apply them to your business and become successful at whatever it is that you're doing online with your product or service. So today in this episode, I want to talk about um, the, I want to answer the question as to whether or not you should be sending your website traffic or your web traffic from your marketing directly to your product page where people can buy that product directly on that page. Or should you be using some sort of a funnel where they go through a few different steps instead of just going directly to that product page? Which one's more successful? Which one's go, uh, most likely to work? That's the debate here. Now, there's no wrong or right answer here, but there are some things that I'm going to go through that is going to hopefully help you to determine whether or not it's uh, a better um system to go directly to a product page or if it's best to go through a sales funnel if you do if you do not know what sales funnel is i have an episode on this already um, but essentially it is a sequence of steps that you take a potential lead through before they then um, see your main offering your main product which you ultimately want them to buy and um, that then basically warms them up before they become an actual customer. So it makes the decision easier than just sending them directly to a product page. Now it's easy to think, okay, why not just send my paid traffic or my content marketing traffic to the product um, where people can see that buy now button, because ultimately you want to make sales right. And you want people to see that product. You know, everyone thinks that way, including me. And um, I'm going to say that in some cases it may work, in other cases it may not. The cases where I don't think your, your, your landing page for the product directly is going to work is if you have a higher ticket item. Um, I think it's most likely that you're going to need to give that potential lead some time to get to understand your brand a bit more or to get to know what you're like and trust you or trust your business to be able to make that buying decision. If it's a smaller priced item, then you may be able to get away more with just sending traffic directly to that landing page. But you want to make sure that you um, understand in you know which cases to use one or the other. So I've got four points here that I've made, which um, you should consider when making that decision. So the first thing is to figure out whether, whether or not your product, ask yourself, is my product understood and is it um, popular so what i mean by that is that if you have something that is um you know is already on the market whether it's a service or product people already know this you have competitors that are doing exactly the same thing and your differentiating factor is you your brand um, and that's why people would come to you over the other person or it could be price as well but i'm um, i would say that you shouldn't really make price the main factor why people will come to you um, so if your product is easy to understand people already get it then you may be able to get better results sending people directly to that product page because because they know what to expect you don't need to actually explain things much to them um, if you have something outside the ordinary where it's something that is so unique that people might not get it straight away you need to spend time to um, actually sell it quote unquote to them then a landing page for that product or service with a buy now button might not be the best way it may be better to take them through a sequence of steps as in a funnel to get them warmed up and to have time for them to understand the product or the service and to understand who you are what you do and how you do it and what the results are that you can get for them that might take some more time and therefore a funnel may be a better option than a dedicated landing page with a buy now button. Um, if it's popular, again, uh, that's the second part of that point. You don't really have to do much selling because they already know that they want that product. It's a hot product or service, and they are already looking for that. And you presenting them with a buy now landing page um, should be um, okay. But again, you can't tell what the results are going to be 
And I always recommend that you test things in, um, you know, one way or the other and see which one gives you the result because there are nuances that are going to be different from business to business and product to product. The second point is, is your brand already known? If your brand isn't known, if you're obscure, if no one really have um, any connection with your brand, then you probably are going to find it more, much more difficult to sell to somebody on a dedicated landing page, as opposed to going through, again, a sales funnel, marketing funnel type system where people get to um, be warmed up by you. They, you can have the opportunity to deliver more value um, before you then pitch them on that product. Um, the third one is um, how you drive the traffic. So marketing can be done either, well, in one of two ways. You can either pay for traffic through, um, let's say, Facebook ads or some kind of other paid ads, YouTube, um, LinkedIn, or even traditional ads. Maybe you do a radio spot or TV ad, a magazine, newspaper type thing. You need some kind of call to action. And some um, situations work better um, when you do paid ads than when you do, uh, let's say, content marketing, which is the second way you can drive traffic. Uh, so content marketing is a primary way that I think you should be driving traffic anyway. And then the paid ads, if you do those, should be um, enhancing those um, pieces of content that you already have or pulling uh, or shedding light on those pieces of content. Um, and again, I've talked about this in previous episodes where if you rely on just paid ads, you have to always have that money going in. You have to have that budget. And the moment you stop paying for ads, the traffic stops. However, with content marketing, it's a long-term strategy where you're building up momentum over time, whether it is that you're doing a video or videos rather, podcasts, uh, blog posts, those already will, once you publish them, they already will be um, out there online and they'll be there for months, years to come, and they can continue to drive traffic provided that your content is providing value and you're not having to pay for it over and over and over again. Um, so you could do a video series, let's say one time. Um, in those cases, um, if that's something that works for your business, if you do a video series, for example, you may want to drive the traffic to a lead magnet, which is a way of uh, you capturing people on your email list. And then you can go through a funnel of emails, a sequence of um, emails, basically, which is an email funnel. And that can help people to warm up to the brand and then you can sell to them that way. Um, however, if you're positioning the video, the piece of content, whatever it is that you're putting out as a, um, as a problem solution, product, then it's okay for you to send them to a, a dedicated landing page because you've already um, told them it's going to be a product anyway. So they expect that. So that's something to consider. I hope that makes some kind of sense. I might have um, confused you a little bit there. And the final point is also, the final point is going to be um, what the product price point is. So um, if you sell a higher priced product, a high ticket item, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to sell just like that directly on a single landing page with a buy now button because people will naturally want to take time to make a decision when they're going to spend a certain amount of money. Um, a high ticket item can be different for different industries and different uh, types of businesses and different people. Apologies if you can hear the plane, plane noise outside. I'm directly under the flight path to Heathrow Airport here in London. So there's a plane passing like every minute. It's pretty busy. Um, so yeah, so if you have a high ticket item, you may get better results uh, going through a sales funnel where you offer a, a free um, gift, a lead magnet, whether that's some free training, a sample of some sort, um, a guide, um, something that's going to help people get on board with solving the problem that they're trying to solve. And then um, you can then go through your email sequence again and uh, pitch your higher price product and position it in a way that is going to ultimately solve their problem, provided it's the right client that obviously or the right lead that you've got inside your funnel. Um, if you're selling a uh, low cost item, so not, um, I'm not going to use the word cheap here because cheap 
can um, imply that the value of the product isn't high. It can still be a high value product, but it's at a low cost. Um, so if you're selling that and um, it's more at an affordable affordable price for the um, the type of customers that you're trying to attract, then it's much easier for them to make that decision on a dedicated landing page with a buy now button because they don't have to think too much about or oh, spending this small amount versus spending a larger amount. So you might get better results with that. So that's when I would probably not think about going through a funnel. I'll just send them directly to a dedicated landing page. Um, with everything you have to test, so you could do split tests, which is essentially if you're doing advertising, say, for example, on Facebook or whatever, you could have two ads and send um, two identical ads and send traffic to one to a funnel and one to a dedicated landing page and test that over a period of time um, and see what the results are. The one that gives you the better conversions, as in more people actually buy, then that's obviously going to be the more successful one. If it's, say, you're doing YouTube or blog posts and you want to have that call to action as um, going to a particular um, URL or a web uh, address, then you could have a period where you test it with one going to a landing page, ded dedicated product page, and the other going to a funnel with, with an opt-in or however you design your funnel. Um, so yeah, that's my take on it. Hopefully this has um, helped you somewhat. If you've got any questions, leave me um, comments if you're watching on YouTube. And you can reach me on my website as well on marlonmatpherson.com. Uh, just use the contact form on there and send me whatever questions you have relating to this topic. Um, and finally, you can join me on my Facebook group, which is uh, facebook.com slash groups slash Future Steps Creative. So the group name is Future Steps Creative. Um, just send me a request and I will add you and you can ask me questions in there and get some access to um, other people who are in there as well. Um, so you can join the community. Um, that's all I've got for you in this episode of Future Steps Creative. Um, do subscribe on YouTube and leave me a, um, a review if you're listening to this on iTunes or on Stitcher or any other podcast platform. And I will speak to you soon in the next one. Take care for now.